so let's get started on making our quilt sandwich. So the first thing we're going to do is put our quilt top just to the side because that's not where we start. We start with the backing. So here's my uh, Bonnie and Camille navy backing. And we're actually going to put the backing with the face, the right side of the fabric, down towards your table. Now, my question, I suppose, is um, do you always quilt based on a table? You can do it on a floor, but I've got to say I'm a bit, bit beyond just crumbling around on a, on a hard wooden floor. And we actually don't have anywhere in our house that uh, has a wooden floor that is big enough for quilts. So um, I've always done them on a table. Um, once you get up to a larger size, of course, maybe a queen size or a king size, I used to send them out to uh, a long armour. Um, now that I've got my own long armour, of course, they just go upstairs and I, I quilt my own. But for these smaller projects, a tabletop is easy, it's nice and easy to get to, and uh, we can, you know, base things quite nicely. So, first things first, backing right side down towards the table. Now, if you've read anywhere or you've done a bit of basting before, you'll see people talk about masking tape to the tabletop or the floor or whatever. Um, this table has actually been, has an oil finish, so the masking tape never sticks. So I've just gotten to the point where I know how to um, make sure I'm not gonna get any puckers uh, on the back of the quilt. So that's our first section or first layer. The second layer of the quilt sandwich, as we talked before, is the batting or the wadding. Now, I'm just using an off cut here because, you know, the table run is not particularly large. Now, um, this is a bit hard to obviously see in a video, but uh, there's kind of a right and a wrong side to um, quilt batting. And for me, I like the, the slightly softer side to go up. So it will be right underneath your, your actual quilt top or your table runner top. So with this one, it's a bit hard to tell, but that's just that slightly little bit softer. And you'll see that I've cut my um, batting, or wadding, whichever you want to call it, um, to just slightly smaller than the backing of the quilt. And that's so that I want to still see my, my backing so that I can make sure I'm lining things up. Um, this is, it's not really a directional print, but you can sort of see if I got it a bit skewed, you'd notice it on the other side. So I'm going to try and keep that as straight as possible. So now that we've got all that flat, and you'll notice I've been just rubbing things out and that's just smoothing it so that there's no um, puckers underneath. And sometimes you can put one hand here, put a little bit of pressure and just, just gently pull your backing just to make sure there's no folds or creases happening underneath. And we've got it nice and smooth and you can see it's laying smooth. And then the next st stage is to bring your quilt top or your table runner top in my case um, onto your, um, your quilt sandwich. And again, we're trying to kind of line it up. Now I do a lot of this by eye. Um, and when it all comes down to it, it's just a quilt, it's just fabric. We can, uh, if you know, my backing's a little bit skewed and the directional print's a little bit uh, going in one direction, it's not really going to matter especially for a table runner, because we're probably only just going to have it with this side up. Okay, so again, I'm smoothing. I'm trying to make sure that this centre seam that's fairly obvious is as straight as possible. And I've got this as flat as possible. And now, now we're going to talk about basting pins. Um, you just get one out so that you can see. See this basting pin? It's a, it's a safety pin, but it's got a, a curve to it. A curve to it. So when we're starting to push it through all of our three layers of fabric and start to pull it up, that curve helps the tip of the safety pin to come up through the fabric much easier on your hands and allows us to then close it once it's um, through all the, the layers of fabric. However, before we do that, one of the tips for basting on a tabletop, and of course, I don't know whether you can see closely, but this is actually a red gum tabletop. And whilst we, you know, don't mind a few knocks and bruises on it, it's a table that we use all the time, I don't want to get pinholes in it. So my tip is to grab one of your cutting mats from your sewing table and slip it on underneath. Just 
make sure that when you slipped it under there, that, you know, your backing didn't get caught and all the rest of it. I can still see my backing in all spots and it's still nice and flat. But this means when we start to put our pins in through our quilt sandwich, we're not going to be gouging a pin into the, the lovely tabletop that you have. So let's get started. Now, just a few more tips on some pins. You'll see a nice big container full here and they get all caught up. But if you have another um, something to, to lay them on and you just flip them up and down like that, they all come undone. And now I leave my pins open, just trying to minimize the number of times I open and close these things. So I, when I pull them out from my, my last quilt, I will leave them open. Every now and then you'll find one that uh, is still closed, but most of them will be open, ready to go. Now to baste a quilt, we start in the middle. Um, and this is just to make sure that as we're putting our pins in and we're working outwards, we're trying to make sure that um, everything on the back stays nice and flat, nice and uh, stable so that we're not getting puckers. Um, those basting puckers, we just don't want them. <laughs> Okay, so let's have a go. Here's one of my pins, and I'm going to start putting my pins in from the middle. And look, the rule, you know, if we're following the quilt police rules, you know, sort of a, a, a handful kind of size, so about sort of three inches. Um, every three inches you need a pin. I like to, at this point, stop and have a bit of a think about how I'm actually going to quilt it. Um, just so that, especially for the first pass of my uh, quilt top in the quilting machine, which I'm going to do on my domestic in a little while, um, I just don't have to take out pins straight away. So, for example, if I was going to do some straight line quilting, which is probably what I will do with this, um, I would be looking at perhaps doing some straight line quilting about every inch to half an inch. So I might actually put my pins almost on the seam or very close to the seam because my first pass is going to be just a little bit to one side. Um, if you're going to do a free motion, you know, you, you might just have to be taking some pins out straight away. But to have a bit of a think about your quilting plan. Now I'll try and do this so that you can see it. So I'll do it this way. So we're going to pop the pin in and I can feel that it's hit my cutting mat. And I'm now going to start that up motion. And I like to put my finger just the other side of where the pin's going to come out so that it helps me to get that pin up and out. And I then close the pin and I've got my first one in. Now, the pins will make a, a little bit of a hole in your fabric, but um, if you're worried about that, once you've finished quilting, if you can still see some holes, just get your fingernail and just rub gently over the fabric and that will remove the hole. And also, it, the first time you wash your quilt or your table runner, etc., the holes will disappear. So don't worry terribly much about them. Um, now, as I said, I'm going to be doing some straight line quilting this way. So I'm actually going to sort of put my shoulder towards the, the video camera, sorry, and I'm going to actually pin this way up and down. And it's a case of rinse and repeat. Now, when you get to the point that you've, you've done your um, pinning from the center out and you're coming out to the end, and you get to the end of your cutting mat, just scoot it along, just so that you can keep making sure that your tabletop is, is okay and you're not going to damage it. And as you move anything, just make sure you just keep flattening things out, smoothing things, making sure that your three layers are still all um, nice and flat and not getting puckers on them anywhere. Well, I might leave you, go and finish pinning this and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so here we are and I've finished um, doing all the basting of the, the table runner. Now, that one pin or those first couple of pins I put in, I'm just going to take out and put so that they're flowing with all the rest of them and make it easy when I come to quilt. I just wanted to show you how to take them out. Um, I usually put my finger underneath, using that to press open the, the top of the safety pin and then pull it out. And as I'm talking to you about the, the little uh, holes, sometimes I'll just cover them up or just press those a little bit and I'll pop it back 
pin. Now, as I said also, I leave these pins open. So if I was pulling them out after I'd quilted, I'd just be popping them straight back in my tin, ready for the next time. So we'll just pop that one back in, going in the right direction. And so here we are. Now, the most important thing to do when you've um, done your basting is to flip it over and make sure that you haven't got any puckers. So, you know, for example, if, if I'd accidentally put a, a crease or a pucker in here and pinned, you don't want that when you're quilting. So you would have to turn it back over, unpin that area and try again, keeping it all nice and flat. But that is looking pretty good. So we're all getting very close to, to getting to the point of quilting. Now, just one other point. I also did a line of pins all the way around the outside. And that just helps when you're starting to quilt. Obviously when you're quilting, everything starts to shrink up a little bit, which is why we make our backing and our batting wider than our quilt top, by the way. Very important point, I forgot to tell that to you at the beginning. Um, so yeah, once, once you're quilting, especially if you're doing something like straight line and quite close together, the everything sort of scrunches up a bit. So leaving that line of pins around the, the edge of your, your project until you've finished just about the majority of your quilting is a great idea. Otherwise it could start to come in close, you know, come in unevenly. Um, we want to keep it as square as possible. So that's how to baste a quilt top. Hope that's helped. Look forward to seeing what your projects look like.